Sea Dogs made the playoffs. Woo Sox had a good season. Meantime, guys are getting called up probably earlier than expected, but not the case of Tristan Casas. They were really deliberate, took their time, made sure he was ready. The high ankle sprain set things back a bit. But, man, we're getting a look at uh, what you saw this season. Tell us what you got to see. You got to see more of him than we have so far. What impressed you the most? I mean, he's a rare breed. For me, if you overgeneralize it, there are three types of minor league players. One, the top prospects, first-round picks, they're going to be fine for the most part. Then you have the hard workers who really need to use that work ethic to move up in the system. And then you have guys like Tristan Casas who combine the two. It is so hard to find, and Red Sox fans are already falling in love with this guy, and you can see why. He is obsessive about his prep work, his routine. Uh, no surprise to any of us in AAA that he did his shirtless stretching routine in his big league debut. Not shy, extremely confident, and just the combination of how hard he works and how good he naturally is is going to make him a superstar in short order. A different guy, but in a very good way. Yes, he's got a sense of humor, he's unique, and he's one of the best interviews in this market. He's just so open about all the work that goes into it. He's not going to give you platitudes and cliches. He's a fascinating guy to watch and listen to. All right, on the mound, Brian Bayo, uh, he's a guy who did get rushed up because of injuries. They wind up leaving him here for the most part, and we really see him start to get more comfortable at the major league level, starting to show some of the emotion now you got to keep that emotion just under the boiling level. And sometimes we've seen it get a little too much. But I thought Sunday night, Yankee Stadium, bright lights, Aaron Judge closing in on the record, Sunday night baseball, he looked like a five-year veteran. Tell us what you know about Bayo. Yeah, he's just 23. And I, I was trying to figure out what caused some of the struggles early. And for the most part in AAA, it just seemed too easy for him. His stuff was so nasty. He was getting swings and misses whenever he wanted. Honestly, just throwing sinkers and change-ups, and that was fine. Obviously, when you get to the major leagues, that slider needs to help out more. The four-seam fastball has been a great developing pitch for him. So once he got over the fact that, okay, I can't kind of cruise control through these AAA hitters, this is the big leagues now, I think he really was able to reset and able to start dominating and, and showing fans what we've been expecting to see. Casas and Bayo are two of those guys you talk about, high prospects with a high expectation that goes along with that. Two guys we've seen now for the past few weeks who who aren't those are Caleb Ort and Zach Kelly. Both really impressed at the AAA level, earned their opportunity here. There's been some ups and downs at the major league level, but it hasn't overwhelmed them. Yeah, I would say Ort up until, what, this week hadn't given up a run in the earned column in September. He's got that lockdown closer mentality. He's out there thinking he can blow you away, and certainly now he can. He's throwing triple digits. We did not see that in AAA, so that's an encouraging sign. And he's 30 years old. There's not a whole lot in baseball he hasn't seen yet, so he's not going to be overwhelmed by any of these big moments certainly excelling against the Yankees in certain spots. And then, I mean, Zach Kelly, a great story for a lot of different reasons. Second uh, or Division II draft pick. Then he goes down with the UCL injury, released, pandemic. What's going to happen? And, man, that fastball changeup combination is elite. And it has me thinking about Connor Siebold, who has that similar side spin, unique changeup grip. If Siebold throws one inning, he's mid-90s with his fastball. So if the Red Sox like what Zach Kelly's doing, Maybe Connor Siebold could be a carbon copy or something close to it in the bullpen next year. Out of the bullpen, yeah, interesting. And uh, Zach Kelly, huge hockey fan, which we really appreciate. Uh, you'll do some hockey East for us again this winter? Whenever you need a night off, I am there for you, too. I need a lot of nights off right now. You're getting me <laughs> at the right time. And uh, in full disclosure, your boss, Larry Lucchino, of course, always wants us to promote what's going on next at Polar Park. We got some football going on this fall. Yeah, I'm excited about it, too. Not just Larry Lucchino. It's called the EBW Classic Holy Cross against Bucknell next Saturday, TC. Going to play some football at Polar Park. Event sold out last year, so tickets are limited, but I think some are still available, so it should be a lot of fun. Larry used to come on every week. He always had something to sell, so we had to let you do that. <laughs> uh, Tyler, thanks for coming by. Congrats on the season. It's been great. Thank you, TC. All right, we'll see you at the hockey rink. Maybe Frozen Fenway when we get the ice out here at Fenway Park. There's the hockey fan. Uh, Zach Kelly, I talked to him about playing in the annual, w w whenever they have the ice here annual, uh, Red Sox versus Nesson uh, grudge match on the ice. He said the Red Sox would never let him play because of the risk of injury. So he asked if he could play for the Nesson team. Uh, negotiations continue. We'll be back after this.